full garb on. He's got the medals. He he looks the part, and no one, none of the family knew who he was. Oh, he's got a bodyguard with him too? Yeah, he showed up just near the end of the service, kind of like seemed to stand there for a bit, and then they left, and everyone's like, who the fuck was that guy? Well, before, okay, so before he left, though, as the, bo- as the, the casket was going, getting lowered into the ground, he walked up to the casket and placed a medal on the casket and left. Because that's isn't in the military. Isn't that don't they like hammer something into the casket if you're a military service member? I think if that and duty. law enforcement. Law enforcement. But so, it, but we, so that's what kind of seems, seems like he he's doing something to com, like commemorate his service or something. Which is bizarre though, because the family everybody says like there's no Danny. Danny was not involved in the military at whatsoever. He would he never had any yeah. served. He did, there's no duty. Nothing. Well, and also he like the military guy was tailed by like, you know, this very official looking guy wearing like, uh, like a, you know, an executive line. If you don't know what that is, that's a beltless trench coat oh. uh, w- with his uh, aviators. Right. Like just looking very it's a government official, just security. kind of like tailing this guy, boys. this general. It's packing right? heat. Yeah. OK. And so he, he must have bought that from Jack Clompus. Had to. 100 percent. Had to. He fucking. Right? Yeah. Right, you got that shipped up from Del Boca Vista, without a doubt. Yep. No moths. <laughs> so after the funeral, his brother gets his wish, and they do a redo an autopsy, even though they say, "Well, it's going to be a problem because everything's been removed, and it's going to be a little yeah. more." Yeah, difficult. like he's already been embalmed. What do you want? Like you want te- you want a sample of his his fucking the embalming fluid? Like what the fuck do you want? But yeah, they're like, hey, they're like, hey, we don't usually do this for. Uh, you know, people who committed suicide. Yeah, like, weird. this is a suicide, you know, right? Yeah. Like, suicide. You don't but want What the fuck you waste my time? He's embalmed. What do you want from me? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> but so before we get into that, like, so I have some details on the autopsy. Before we get into that, I want to bring up two. So we've had the fact that he told his brother, hey, if anything happens to me, you know, it, it's something, you know, it's deliberate. Somebody's had an attempt on my life. We've got him stating that he's had these threatening phone calls. Well, his housekeeper also corroborates the threatening phone calls. Okay. He's been getting them for a couple months leading up to him leaving to Martinsburg. The day he leaves at 9 a.m., the housekeeper answers the phone. And on the end, other end, he's got a guy, which I'm just going to guess the boys, since we're doing racial stereotypes here. I will cut his body and feed him to the fish. Huh? Whoa. That sounds super. Whoa. I'm a, I'm a lot of Arab. <laughs> But it's true, right? So he, the, on the other line, he tells him he's like, "I'll cut his body, and I will." It's not even an accent, Andrew. Actually, Andrew's actual, actual this accent. This is my. This is an is accent. Canadian. Yeah, right? the Canadian yeah. version is his accent. Yeah. It's, right. all, it's all. Play. So he has somebody. She answers. Somebody says, "I will cut his body and feed him to the sharks," and then less than an hour after that, she picks up the phone again, and somebody just says, "Drop dead." Okay, the third phone call comes in. Yeah. And it's just music. You don't know me, but I know you, and I know where you live. <laughs> From Rusty Shackelford. That not necessarily happened, but the third time she answered the phone, there was just music playing with heavy breathing. And then there was a fourth and fifth call that were just dead. Okay. This is all in the same night, or this is this over? Is, this multiple. is the same day that he left for Murdensburg. Okay. <sighs> Dude, how sh- how crazy were landlines? Oh, dude, terrifying. You know what I mean? Like, people just c- could look up your number and then just torment you. Yeah, it's horrifying. Like, how many times have you guys been tormented ever? Listen, never. Listen, That's never tor- happened to me. I get so many fucking tormented fucking sales calls Boys, every day. It's insane. Listen, though, if I'm getting somebody telling me they're going to cut me and feed me the fish, and then I'm just getting, like, okay, you know what? I'll deal with that one. I've been, I've heard words over the phone, but the breathing and the, and the, that, and the silence. Honestly, that would really I, it's time unnerve to move. me. It's time to move. Yeah. Change your fucking phone. Time to move. But so we have because it's like, dude, it, it just it, it's, it's such a weird time. The 90s, because like you could just go to a phone book. And if you know someone's last name, you knew their address and their telephone number. Yeah. <laughs> At any point, you just be like, yeah, this is where they live. And this is how I can call and breathe into the phone. Yeah, terrifying. Well, you could like, have paid, you could have paid a for a private number. Yeah, but, but then no, right? what, a time, no one did it. what a time hey, to listen, be a stalker. Fuck, it's star 69. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. yeah. But what if you star 67? Before, Before they, they star sixty nine. Remember when those motherfuckers yeah. used to three way call you? Oh, I used yeah. to set up all the time. You'd be talking to a girl on the phone, and they'd be like, "Oh, well, she's on the other line." You're like, "Oh, motherfucker!" 
Anyways. That, that never happened to me. I never <laughs> had any girls talking to me. Anyways. So we got the housekeeper that's corroborating these phone calls. We've already talked about the fact that the family's like, listen, Danny, super squeamish, faints at the sight of blood, wouldn't, didn't even let us do blood work on him, wanted nothing to do with it. There's no way that he slashed his wrists. Okay. We had a girlfriend that lived with him for seven years. Said Danny is basically Tobias Funke. He's a never nude. There's no way he would kill himself and be caught <laughs> fucking nude. Ever. You know, it's because I was, I was kind of thinking that too because I was like, you know what? If I was going to do the deed, I probably, I'm probably i probably not getting naked. Listen. Okay, listen. No. As a, as a guy who's not a big fan of baths, all right? Never been a big fa- fan of baths. There's one major reason. Why, listen. There's one major reason why I'm not a fan of baths, all right? You're sitting in okay, that bath and your shame just floats at the top of the water and stares <laughs> you in the fucking eyes. All right? Yeah, yeah, sure. That's not yeah, how you sure. want to go, boys. Okay? <laughs> <You're> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right? It's just floating there. Okay? You can't even add bubbles. No. Because you... And, dude, it's, it's worse. I can't. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing worse than, like, the illusion of bubbles so you can't see any other part of your body other than the little piece of calamari oh, floating. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> okay. Right for that reason right there, this is no way this is a suicide. Absolutely not. <laughs> There's no <laughs> chance. Absolutely not, man. It's uh What if you're yeah, hung though? Dude. What if you're hung then you don't care? Give a shit. Yeah, it's it's got like a fucking reason. anaconda floats swimming around the bathtub. The only way you're you're it's na- that's an accidental autoerotic asphyxiation. That's the only way. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> Listen, if you're hung you're hey, listen, you. let's be honest. If you're hung you're not killing yourself either. So, it is what it is. There's no nice. way. <laughs> Life's fun. Life, everything's fine. All your problems yeah. are solved. Okay, so we maybe that was the final straw. You just <laughs> and you're just like, you know what? We've already cast a little bit of like reasons why we're starting to doubt the fact that this is a suicide. All right, now let's get into the fucking aut- autopsy that his family had to de- fucking demand. Okay, his family had to demand, and the fact that he was already embalmed, huge os- obstacle, right? Pose a, poses a problem. Well, because the embalm, like the, the 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 fact that he's embalmed, basically wrecks. Like, there's no blood left, and it wrecks the fucking tissues. But what do they put? Do they put like formaldehyde in oh, your body? Or how shit, do they? Boys. They like just stuff you full of preservatives, right? Yeah, it's fucking great. They pickle you. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Luckily, prior to the embalming, there was a blood sample taken from his heart. They took urine sample from him. And they also got a sample from the, um, the, the vitreous fluid, which if you know the vitreous fluid, the uh, gel-like fluid around your eye. So they oh, had okay. three samples going into that. So they did a couple scoops. They weren't completely clueless. Still, they did still a bit. grossly neg- negligent, but at least they got a few samples. And the autopsy showed that he had a blood alcohol level of 0.04. It's pretty low. Okay. So one old Milwaukee. One old Millie, like nothing, like below the legal limit here, yeah. let's be honest, right? But it gets interesting yeah. because he had trace amounts of Vicodin and an antidepressant in his system. Danny had a current prescription for Vicodin from an oral surgery that he had a few years ago. But no record of an antidepressant. Zero. He had no prescriptions. Prescribed. No diagnosis of de- depression. Anything like that. Okay. And it gets a little bit weirder because there was no fucking bottle found on scene. There was no prescription bottle, nothing, zero trace of where this antidepressant came from. And then the autopsy also... Was there a bottle of the other one? Of the Vicodin, yes. There was Vicodin. Yeah. There was a Vicodin. Vicodin. Bottle. But trace them out. So how fast does Vicodin, or how long here's, does it stay in your system? Here's the problem. This is just a small sample of blood from the heart. So it had to be what, like, it would be minimal to, compared to what was actually in his system if they actually got a proper blood sample from. Right. right? right, right. Additionally... He had a bruise on his arm and a bruise on his head, head, which was never accounted for, right? The police stated that there was no signs of any struggle, and he additionally was missing the tips off of three of his fingers, fingernails. So, so we're talking like the nails broken off. At broken the off of his finger, which sounds awfully mm-hmm. like a fucking struggle. Well, and one of the things I read is that is indicted, like that is lots of times they see that as a defensive wound absolutely like you're fighting someone or clawing at someone uh and that'll happen zell actually before the show if you want to share it again you made yeah, a, a claw. kind of an interesting point 
The def- yeah, it's called the defensive that claw. That's a good point, too. That was the point I was going Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.